Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to look at how to make a simple chimney. We're going to use a few tools that we didn't use in the previous videos. Mainly we're going to use something known as extrude, and we're going to extrude some of the facings. So I'll get into more detail when we get to that step. So the only thing I've really done ahead of time is I created the PNG, the image for the material that we're going to use for our brick chimney. Now, if you haven't seen this before, I'm just going to open this up. I'm going to zoom in. And this kind of tiling has been done for decades. So what you do is you create an image such that you can stack it vertically and horizontally. That is, you can tile it, and it makes basically an uninterrupted pattern. So the way you do that, at least in this case, we create a brick that is exactly the length of the image, and it's half the height. The bottom half is another brick, but it's split in half. So this way, if you stack it in either direction, up and down or left and right, you'll have a nice pattern. So what will happen is if you stack this above it, you'll have a split brick, a solid brick, and then a split brick. Likewise, if you stack this to the left or right, you get solid, solid, solid. And then this half brick, this edge will be against this edge of the next image, and it'll stack seamlessly. And by using such a small image, it saves a lot of memory. So that's all I did. I drew that in Anime Studio Pro. And then once you draw the, PA, the PNG image, you literally just drag and drop it from the folder that you saved it in into the asset area. So that was the first step. OK, so now let's actually create the model. So as I've mentioned in the other videos, if you do not have Pro Builder installed, just go to Window, go to Package Manager, and you'll see Pro Builder. You just select it and install it. At the time of writing, you can still get it also from the Asset Store for free. It creates the new Tools menu, and then you go to Pro Builder. So we want to create a new shape, and we're going to use a cube this time. I'm going to stack it three high. I'm going to click on Build Cube, close that, and we zoom in. So now what we're going to do is first we're going to subdivide this. And as I've mentioned, when you're working in a, when you're doing this kind of 3D modeling, always be aware of what kind of tool you're using. Are you selecting the object as a whole? Are you selecting individual points, vertices? Are you selecting the edges that connect the points? Or are you selecting the facings that the edges define? So in this case, we want the whole object. And we're going to use subdivide object. You can see it's been split in half. And then we're going to subdivide object again. You can see that the top has also been subdivided because we had the entire object selected. So what, you could, what we're going to do is we're going to create an inset and we're going to use the extrude tool. So we're just rotating around so we can get a good angle of this. So we're going to select the, the move tool. And then we're going to select the facings selection. And then we're going to select the middle four. To select multiple ones, there's a couple ways. You can do a lasso, which we're going to look at in a minute. But there's a reason why we're not going to use it here. Or you can shift click just like anywhere else in Windows. So you click this. Now you hold shift. Click, click, click. Now I've selected just those four. So we go back to, actually go to the scale tool, hold shift, and then you'll see it'll pop up on the screen and say extrude. So we're going to push in this direction, and then we push in this direction. And so what you can see is you've created these additional facings. Now we go to the move tool. What we're going to do is we're going to vertically move these down. So let's just rotate around so you can see this better. So we have those four facings selected. We're just going to move this down. Now you can see that this is slanting in. So depending on what you're doing, you may or may not want that. If you don't want that, we'll clean that up in a second. Just want you to be aware of it. But just that easily, you created an inset. So let's rotate around. And as far as clearing up that, we still have the facing selected. So what you can do is you can just go back to your scale tool. Do not um, you hold shift this time. We're not trying to extrude. 
we're basically going to move these edges out. So since the slant is along, I believe that's the x-axis. We'll just scale this out. And you, I'm just kind of eyeballing it, not doing it scientifically or anything. Now you have a nice vertical descent. So again, for some reason, you might want a slant. Say you're not making a chimney, you may not want that slant. You, you may want the slant. So in this case, we don't. Okay, so, so far, so good. We've created an inset. Uh, obviously, if someone is traveling over the chimney, like on, on a rooftop, they would see that. So you got to be mindful of where you're using this for. So now we're going to use the lasso ability where you you just kind of drag and select. It's just you have to be very careful about it because what happens is you'll select ones that if, if you overlap even a little bit, you're going to select ones that you don't want to. So we're going to do. Let's see if I can get this in one shot. All right. Now I'm just going to rotate it to make sure. See how nothing is selected there. So if I had gone down too far, I could have accidentally selected those. And now we're going to extrude again. So we go to our scale tool. You can see the arrows disappear. I'm going to hold shift. We extrude out that way. And then I'm just going to rotate this so it's easier to do it. And we extrude out that way. And again, not being scientific, just kind of eyeballing it. Again, the idea is this is kind of uh, test and placeholder graphics. Like I said, if you want, you could move these edges, move them out. So there we go. So you have the basics of a chimney now. And so what we're going to do is we now need our material. So we're going to right click, create material we'll call this bricks and to apply an image to material you're just going to drag it onto the albedo where it says main maps you click it there and then you need to add this to the material editor so let's go to the material editor and now you can just drag and drop it here now this is going to look completely and utterly wrong so we're going to take this we're going to go back, select our entire object, and we're going to do Alt-5. I'm just going to click on the button, though. So clearly, that is not enough bricks, okay? And now what we're going to do... Select all those. There we go. Not 100% why it didn't select them all the first time, but all I did was change it to facing, selected, and then it was fine. Now, as you can see, this is way, way wrong. Now, why does it look like this? Well, because if you call, we started with three objects. So each object has the brick tile once if I'm doing the math correctly because the brick tile is two bricks. So one, two, one, two, one, two. So each object has it once because it is a one by one tile. So what happens though is if I change this source material, everywhere it's applied will be fixed. So we'll just click on bricks here and here for tiling, Let's make this say three, and you can see it immediately changed. And since it's tall, let's put this at like five. And suddenly it looks passable. Again, kind of like PS1 era. And you've got little anomalies like the corners are kind of these mini brick sort of things. You can actually work more detailed with what's known as the UV editor and create an unwrap, but that's a much more advanced process. Again, these are really just meant to be basic, introductory, 
uh, as far as lessons to uh, how to use the Pro Builder. Okay, so I think that gets us to basically where I wanted to for the modeling. What you can do, it's separate. If we close this and close this, you can then add like a particle system there. And that would be really easy as far as game object. And then you do particle system. I know this is entirely different lesson doing the particle systems, but I want it to be worth your time. I mean, what good is a chimney if smoke isn't coming out of it? So let's shrink the size of the particles. They need to be much smaller. Let's slow down the speed of the particles. Let's increase the emission as far as how many are coming out. Let's reduce the, I clicked on shape. Let's reduce the diameter since it's coming out of a narrow chimney. Just get above that. See, it's not quite right. Let's see if that's right. Uh, still doesn't look quite right. Ah, I think it's close enough for this. Okay, and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to, actually two last things, we're going to have, just as you think of smoke billowing out, you increase the particle size. So what we need is size over lifetime. I'm going to click on that. And this determines how big it starts. So it's starting basically at zero and then going up to 1.0. So let's make this like five. There we go. Now it just kind of pops out of existence, which you really don't want. Also, it's kind of starting a little bit too small. So you can just grab that start size. And you can see it starts off bigger now. And so you don't want it to pop out of existence, but you don't really want it to be smaller again. So what do you do? You have it become translucent. So it pops out when it's basically invisible. So color over lifetime, click here. The bottom one is the color. The top one is the alpha. So if you click here, see alpha, you set this to zero. Now it's just kind of fading away. And then we can just click on this and make this whatever, gray, click over here. If you don't want it to get lighter like that, and now we have a proper chimney that is polluting the sky. Okay, so I hope you found this interesting. I hope this was helpful. I kind of combined two lessons to one, the modeling and the um, particle system, but hopefully this was helpful to you. And uh, just as I mentioned, the other videos, like in this case, you can select the particle system, attach it to the chimney, and, and everywhere you instantiate, you spawn the chimney, it will also spawn the particle system. So I think that should do it. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you want to see something else demonstrated, leave a comment to tell me what you'd like to see demonstrated. And I hope this has been helpful.